having me here today. I know my topic is a bit out of a, a scope, but I think uh, at the end you will see we have some issues in common. Uh, how indigenous people arrived on the Canary Islands and how they survived isolated for such a long time are still unresolved questions. Mm. The available evidence supports uh, that people from North Africa colonized the Canary Islands and they successfully survived in different island ecologies with low densities of um, edible resources <coughs> and lacking outside support. This represents the westernmost limit of the Eurasian colonization in antiquity. When I say Eurasian colonization, I mean the people who arrived to the Canary Islands, they brought the Neolithic farming package. We uh, haven't found any evidence of uh, sub-Saharan African uh, colonization in the Canary Islands. So we can see here the same farming package that we can find in North Africa. Um, and these people remained isolated until the Middle Ages when the Europeans <coughs> arrived and finally conquered the islands. Um, however, today the, chrono the chronology of the colonization is still unresolved and we don't know, for example, how people spread to the islands. And this is important because according to the, the timing of the colonization, we can consider why these people arrived to the islands and who and also how they arrived to the islands. Mm. The Canaries were pristine islands with a unique natural diversity and had different environments, mm. different between the different and uh, the, the islands. Uh, also, the islands didn't have any metal ores and the inhabitants <coughs> were forced to adapt the technological skills to make tools using the available volcanic rocks we don't have any flint, we don't have uh, metals. And also, after the colonization, uh, the first colonization process, we don't find any metals in, in the islands because we don't have any evidence of contact with the continent after the first colonization uh, process. The early colonies uh, translocated the domestic plants and animals and introduced parasitic species with them, thanks to an um, and very good preservation of the organic remains. We have found desiccated cereals, desiccated uh, insects uh, related to the, to the store grains, and also we have mummies ex um, and different kind of, of organic remains. Uh, we know these people transform uh, the island environments to make them more habitable for farming populations. We have different kind of evidence, and we can see how people transform these islands into more habitable uh, landscapes. Uh, but these practices became differentiated in islands with different environments. So we can say that at some point, the environment constrained the development of these societies. But also, we can see that we have islands with similar environments, and they became differentiated. So only the environment doesn't explain the differences that Europeans found when they arrived. Mm. The archaeological evidence also demonstrates that Canadian inhabitants share similar or identical technological and cultural background when they arrived. But these uh, cultures became differentiated through time. When Europeans arrived uh, in the Middle Ages, they indicate that Canarian inhabitants spoke different dialects and didn't have the same fairing skills needed to navigate between islands. This text, combined with archaeological evidence, also demonstrate a significant diversity between islands in terms of social complexity, material culture, and demographic development. There are currently three main hypotheses. And explaining the colonization of the Canary Islands. The first belief the Phoenician of Punic groups from Carthage found the archipelago in the exploratory journeys. They would have settled uh, in the eastern islands 
and in order to exploit <coughs> commodities such as murex. These arguments are mainly based on some radiocarbon dates of non-identified charcoal on ashes sediments and a few comparisons of material culture from Lanzarote that show affinities with Punic typologies, according to those defending this hypothesis. So here we can see uh, we have evidence of uh, a population before the, the outset of the common era, especially in, in Tenerife, but also in La Palma and in Lanzarote. These are one of the uh, archaeological evidence and the author defend this hypothesis proposed as uh, elements of um, unique influence. The point here is, for example, in this case, it looks like a tourist, can be, but it's dated in an archaeological layer from the 6th century AD. In this case, we have a, a tanit, but it, is, uh, it has been found in a, in a well uh, dated in the Middle Ages. The point is, many, uh, some of these hypotheses came from the, from the 80s, where the radiocarbon <coughs> dates were not uh, uh, applied in all their archaeological sites. However, today there are some authors that are defending <coughs> this hypothesis. Uh, a second hypothesis proposed that Romans from North Africa arrived to the Canary Islands around the first century BC, bringing with <coughs> them non seafaring Berber populations to exploit the island's coastal resources, such as Murex. Uh, in support of this hypothesis, we have evidence of Roman presence in form of an uh, amphora near the coastline of Lanzarote and Fuerteventura, the eastern islands, and also we have a short term settlement with Roman material, with Roman evidence, uh, in Lobos Islet, which is between Lanzarote um, and Fuerteventura. Also, we have some ceramic uh, findings in, in the heartlands of Lanzarote, and uh, Pliny the Elder mentioned the colony, well, the discovery of the Canary Islands in the first century BC by fishermen from North Africa. Also, Pliny the Elder mentioned that Huwa II, the king of Mauritania, ally of Rome, uh, sponsored uh, an exploration of the Canary Islands around the first century BC. Um, according to this hypothesis, the collapse of the Roman Empire caused the abandonment of the Berber <coughs> population, who remained isolated until the arrival of the European people. So these Berber people are the indigenous people we know today as Guanches or Canarians, Asian Canarians. Mm. The third hypothesis, hypothesis sorry, is based on, on the MAS radiocarbon days, and you can see here everything changed according to the, the first hypothesis. If we consider all only the, the hygienic radiocarbon days, the colonization of the Canary Islands uh, was uh, around the first millennium AD. Also, according to this hypothesis, uh, the scholars say that the Berber population arrived by themselves, maybe escaping from the Roman expansion of um, in the North Africa, or because of the uh, wars between different Berber groups. The point is, we don't uh, have any evidence of Roman culture uh, features in the Roman and in, in the Aboriginal cultures. <coughs> so the lack of uh, archaeological research and systematic radiocarbon dates from some islands, especially the smaller islands, uh, hinders the development of an accurate view of the, the chronology and dynamics of the colonization. Because it's not, so, it's not important only to understand when the Canaries were first colonized, but also how humans spread through the islands. If we go to the mitochondrial DNA evidence on humans, we can see different diversities between islands, suggesting an heterogeneous process of colonization or different evolutionary histories. 
in this case in El Hierro Island, which is the, the smallest island in the Canaries, we can see a very low mitochondrial diversity. It can be result of a bottleneck effect during the colonization, during the spread of humans, but also it can be result of <coughs> crisis during the, pop during the population of this island. So at the end, we only have samples from the people who remained after a crisis. So we don't know exactly what happened to have this kind of uh, evidence. Also, we have some uh, haplogroups uh, which are only observed in the Canary Islands. According to the coalescent ages of these uh, haplogroups, they are dated in the first millennium AD. But we have a problem with that because we know that because these samples, the individual uh, sample, have this radiocarbon dates because we don't have uh, uh, dates uh, from previous periods. And also, which is interesting, in the Eastern Islands, we have found other haplogroups that we haven't found in the other islands. Also, we have dated these uh, individuals, and all of them uh, are dated after the 11th century AD. It means that maybe these individuals came from a second migration wave after the, the 10th century AD at least. This is interesting because we can see differences between the archaeology of the Eastern Islands and the Western Islands, especially in Gran Canaria. So we don't know if the difference in the, archeo in the archaeological record depends on the new migration or depends on indigenous process, because it's true at the same time these differences are very slight and not very important difference, just in the uh, mm, occupational pattern, in the structure of the unit, <coughs> If we consider Gran Canaria as a model because it's where we have available more radiocarbon dates, we can establish um, a proposal of a sequence for, for the occupation of the Canary Islands. Uh, according to the, the MES radiocarbon dates, uh, we are able to consider at least three main uh, chronological periods. The first, col first colonization process until the 6th century AD, when all the Canary Islands were populated, uh, the consolidation of the settlement and the demographical <coughs> expansion until the 14th, 14th century AD, we can see an increase in the number of radiocarbon dates. And uh, the last period of the European contact and context in between this date to, to 1496, uh, when all the Canary Islands were conquered. Here, maybe in this increase is, is working the second migration wave. But according to the Ancient DNA results in this migration way uh, was not an important output of population. So we we can see also an economic development thanks to to a better adaptation or just because they populated all the islands. In, okay. And also, if we consider the changes in vegetation according to different uh, Pollen records, uh, we can see it since 2300 BP. There, is, there was an important change in the vegetation involving the clearance of woodlands, as indicated by the mark in decline of palms and the spread of grasses on the pollen records. This result could be indicating that Great Canaria was populated earlier than the MES radiocarbon dates indicate. Later, later one, once the forest has been cleared <coughs> in the area, agriculture was locally established as suggested by the increase of cereals after 1,800 years BP. These changes coincide, coincide with the increase in fire frequency and some, and some of them with, with clear archaeological evidence of occupation. The point here, we need uh, highest resolution of pollen records because this, mm, 
these results come from natural basins, so we don't understand very well this specific uh, period when the first uh, colonies arrived to the islands. So we can say that Roman people uh, discovering the islands and later, later Berber population arrived by themselves or maybe uh, Roman people or Romanized people uh, assisted them to, to travel to the islands. However, why did Romans occupy Lobos Island where they didn't have any water resources? Why didn't they occupy Fuerteventura and Sarote? Here, for example, there are some mm, wells that European people mm, explore when they arrive. So, does it mean that, that these islands were populated when Romans arrived and they decided to stay in Lobos just because to be safer? So, we don't know exactly. So, this week uh, I received a confirmation by starting grant. So, to, to, so I got the project to get to, to explore how people from North Africa colonized the, the Canary Islands and how they successfully survived in, in different island ecologies. So hopefully we will have more evidence in, in, in five years' time. Thank you very much for...